Good morning, everyone. Friends here in the sanctuary, we are few happy ones here. This is a virtual service coming out from Berea United Methodist Church. To all of you who are watching and participating in this worship service uh, in your home, at home. So glad to know that you are there worshiping with us. God may be with you and God will be, you, with, will be with you as we worship in the name of Jesus. What a beautiful Sunday morning it is. Gorgeous, gorgeous Sunday morning. Now this is special Sunday. First of all, this is Christ the King Sunday, which is to say that this is the last Sunday of the church year, because next Sunday will be the first Sunday of the first church year uh, called the first Advent of the year. And then, of course, this is also a Thanksgiving Sunday, because on this coming Thursday, we celebrate Thanksgiving, so this Sunday is called Thanksgiving Sunday. This is also um, here in the life of Berea United Methodist Church. This is our last Stewardship Sunday. We call it Gratitude Sunday, as we express our thankfulness to our God for providing all our needs, whether spoken or unspoken. So many, many wonderful things going on in the life of the church on this Sunday that you are worshiping with us. So please uh, join with me in this prayer. And I was going to ask, uh, make this prayer very personal. This is a so-called Christ the King Sunday prayer as we are opening this service with this prayer. My Lord and my King, Lord Jesus, I crown you now. Yours shall be all glory. Help me in this hour to discover again my place and my service in your kingdom. Speak to me, my God, my King, the things you want me to know and the things you want me to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. these ministries are after same and one idea to to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and and love your community and bring people to him no there is no such a thing that too small ministry and we need small ministries and we need maybe a little bit bigger ministries it depends on what we are doing yet if the ministry was only about them who are on the platform, on the stage, mm -hmm. behind the pulpit. That would be a very slim representation of God's ministry. And I'm talking to everyone who is helping us in the kids, in the sound, and the, all the technical matters, cleaning the church, uh, maintaining, doing the maintenance for the buildings and programs and instruments, and just uh, keeping the doors, uh, church door open. You guys are the framework of any congregation. So I'm so thankful for each and every one of you who are making, through your commitment and talent, you are making possible for us to be better church. our service we are actually asking permission from people can I minister to you and, and I think uh, people can't deny that kind of request mm -hmm. if you do it with loving heart and commitment to Jesus Christ
as we begin the singing part of our worship service this morning, we have um, three songs that we're going to sing. One is entitled, We Will Glorify the King of Kings, remembering that this is Christ the King Sunday. One is entitled, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart, remembering that this is our Thanksgiving Sunday. And then our third song we'll sing is uh, inviting the Holy Spirit to come and be with us. And we'll be focusing more on the Holy Spirit also as we go through our service today. I invite you to join with these songs in every way that you can. Um, sing along at home, and um, I invite you to stand up if, if you would um, in your homes as, you, uh, as it may help you to engage a little bit more in singing the songs. So let us begin. We will glorify the King of Kings. Try that again. Verse 3. Let us give thanks with a grateful heart as we look forward to this week of celebrating Thanksgiving, even though it will probably be in a little bit different way than we normally have, but we have so many things to still be thankful for. So let us give thanks.
invite you to just take a few deep breaths as we remember that the Holy Spirit is sometimes referred to as the breath of God. Let him fill your spirits and souls as we worship and we invite him into our hearts, into our homes, into our sanctuary. beautiful thing that the Holy Spirit can be with you there, with us here, where all of God's people are. At this time in our worship service, we'd like to extend the sign of Christ's peace with each other, and we've adopted a little bit different way of doing that, using sign language, and that goes simply, Christ's peace be with you. The nail print hands, Christ's and then peace is become calm, be with you. We extend Christ's peace to you, to each and every one of you as you worship and join us today. And now if you have children in your home, we invite you to gather them close to the screen as we will have a special message just for our children. And then as we welcome them, let us sing, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Yes, indeed. I can almost hear, children, I can almost hear you singing. You are singing so good, so I can almost hear it right here where we are. Okay, have you seen this box before? I, I think you have. We talked about this box maybe a week or two ago, a couple of weeks ago. This is Operation Christmas Child shoe box, so to speak. And now, this is the good news. Everybody here, hear me, hear me, hear me, children. Uh, you guys helped us. You guys, you children, helped us to pack 123 uh, shoe boxes uh, full of uh, gifts and presents for children all over the world, especially for children who may not receive any other Christmas present at this Christmas, okay? You made it possible that these children all over the world received a present from us. And not just from us, but we have reason to believe that it was a, a blessed touch of our Lord Jesus Christ and his love for these children. So when they opened this box that you helped us to pack, when these children, these recipients all over the world, in Africa, in, in some part of Europe, in Romania, and, and in Jamaica, and I don't even know. There are tens of countries where there's, these boxes are headed. When they open up this box and they start counting and seeing what all is inside, and you children, listen to me, you helped us to do it this year. I think it's incredible amount of boxes, 123 boxes under these circumstances, because we get... Several phone calls from people who've, who's been doing it in the past Christmases, and they said, we just don't feel comfortable going out shopping. So we, don't, we skip this time, but we come back next year. Now, but you did it, and thank you so much for doing it. Again, 123 boxes. And we are so thankful to Miss Donna and Miss Karen, who provided their leadership and getting us all involved and encouraging us to not to skip this, do it, and we did it, and children, you help us to do it, okay? Can you follow me up here? 
I think Mr. Chris is helping us to come a little bit closer to this, uh, this table here. We call it the table of remembrance, the altar, the communion table. And when you, as you take a little closer look what is up here, this looks pretty stunning. Am I right? All kinds of things. There are fruits and vegetables and bread. And can you see all these pumpkins here? I'm counting. One, two, three. Did I got it right? I got it right. One, two, three. And one of them, one of these pumpkins, uh, pumpkins are very, very nicely, beautifully decorated. I don't know who did it. I don't know if it's real or not. Let me say it's real, isn't it? Okay. Then we have, what else we have? Okay, we have tomatoes, and we have uh, grapes, and we have onion, and I, I see many apples, of course. And can you see this one here? I'm so thankful that this, this is not a real one, Gates. This is not a real one. This is a turkey, but thank goodness, not a real one. No real one. I can see wheat. I can see com some crops here. Another vegetable, so this is just beautiful. And this is telling us that this is the time, if ever before, to remember God and remember how thankful we are to him that he is providing all our needs, whether very personal needs, very practical needs, our family needs, all the needs we have. So God and our Lord Jesus Christ is the provider. Okay, children, let's keep on looking at this beautiful, beautiful table here. You see this one here? Now, this is a what? What is this? This is a crown. Now, since we celebrate, can you see this? Since we celebrate a Christ the King Sunday, this is a symbol for us to remember who Jesus ought to be to us. The first one, the king, the greatest one, the one we love and the one we follow, okay? Now, Bible does not tell Jesus wearing anything like this when he was walking on the earth. I'd say he did not. He didn't wear any outward symbols pointing out that he is the king. He was very plain wearing sandals and tunic, and just very, very plain. But to us, this will help us to remember who the real king is in my life, in the life of the church, because this is the outward symbol of a, any king that have that authority to rule and to be powerful and loving and providing all our needs. So let's take one more time look at this beautiful table. And then, of course, you see the four um, themes here that are coming next Sunday. These are the Advent themes, but I'm just going to point them out that these are coming. Hope, peace, joy, and love coming toward us as Jesus is coming to your life and to my life. These wonderful themes are walking toward us. Fulfilling our hearts, our families, our friends, with the presence, presence, presence of Jesus Christ. So children, and why not parents too, let's pray together. Let's close our fingers like this. Let's close our eyes. And, and as we pray together, being thankful to our Lord Jesus Christ for all that he is and for all that he has done. Lord Jesus, as we remember the plenty through which you have blessed us on this past year, even during this time of pandemic, Lord, we celebrate you because you are the king. You are the provider, and you are our Lord and Savior. We ask your blessing upon our families, upon our siblings and friends, and for the whole wild world, where all the children are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the last of Steward uh, uh, Sunday in the stewardship series where uh, people in our church come and talk to you about, about stewardship. Uh, <clears throat> Becky and I grew up in the church, in, in the Methodist church. I, I have a picture from my family of where my mother is holding me when I'm less than a year old and, and our family is in front of the church in Sayersville, Kentucky. And uh, Becky and I met when we went to district Methodist youth meetings. And uh, later on, I moved to the city where she, she lived and uh, we started dating there. Went to college together at a Methodist college. The day we graduated, we moved to Berea. And uh, the next Sunday, we came here to church. And that was 56 years ago. So. Uh, I wanted to share that with you, and you, you guys may not really recognize Becky this morning because she doesn't have glasses, <laughs> which she's had for all those 56 years. So uh, she's had cataract surgery and is doing great, and so Becky, if you would, sit down and right back here, and, okay. and I'll tell, talk to these people. Okay. About 25 years ago, I played golf with a group of guys about once a week in the summer. <clears throat> After this time, we all agreed that it was good that we had this group of friends, friends, and we enjoyed the game of golf and getting out in nature. To, uh, after playing with the group for five or six years, one of the group announced all of a sudden that he had cancer. It was a great surprise as he was younger than the most of us at that time. Time went on and the next summer he did not show up for golf. So I called him a couple of, a couple of times and talked to him. And uh, I said, when you feel like playing, come and call me and we'll go play. And uh, later in the summer I got a call and he was ready to play. Didn't really have a lot of energy. So uh, we were unable to play 18 holes, so we played whatever we were able to complete every time we played. We did this once a week for about three months, and finally uh, he was unable to play, and shortly after that he passed. I've often reflected on this situation because I was the only one of the golf friends that attended the wake and the funeral. This got me to thinking about friendship and responsibility and some of the conclusions of my consideration of this golf buddy relationship are as follows. One, I believe that my growing up in the church was a foundation for my actions. Yes, I had a responsibility but that's not really the reason I did anything with my sick golfing friend. If you are a Christian, it just seems natural to respond. That is what growing up in the church teaches, and over the years, it just becomes natural. Christian stewardship at some point, this is the second point, Christian stewardship at some point should become natural to us kind of like a feeling. We act responsibly because it makes us feel like we're doing the work of Christ, and that feels good. As Pastor Timo said in his sermon on November the 8th, we Christians see through hope-colored lenses. Didn't you see through hope-colored lenses as Ashley Isaacs talked about what she and others in the church's children's ministry were doing for the children of our church. I did. It's like in Pastor Timo's sermon on August 25th about talk, talking about being a pillar of the church. The longer we attend the church, the more we become accustomed to the nurturing that emanates from the congregation. It is sort of like God's grace. We don't have to ask for it because it's already there. Over time, each person in our church becomes more valuable to us. They are a part of us, and we are responsible for each other. 
And then one day without knowing it, each of us becomes a pillar of our church. You don't have to be old to be a pillar of our church, just a real seeker of God's hope for you and for us. Now that you realize you are a pillar of our church, how do you respond? In one manner of speaking, it is simple. We simply have to mirror Jesus. He gives us grace. He is selfless, compassionate. He forgives, and he is worthy of our trust. Think of it. What if we mirrored those traits? Well, I believe we do. We not, may not be perfect, but we at Berea United Methodist Church are making the effort. That makes us a pillar of this church. As we mature in our Christian journey, being a part of the Christian experience just seems to feel better and better. For most of us, part of feeling better and better means that we are giving back, too. Stewardship then is almost an involuntary, an involuntary action on our part, simply because we are responding to God's grace and the influence of the people with whom we surround ourselves. God wants us to embrace him. He wants to embrace our fellow Christians. Real stewardship is something we want to do simply because it nurtures. It nurtures our relationship with God, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It nurtures our church and all the people that are part of our lives. It makes us sensitive to the needs of our church and its people. I mentioned maturing in the church earlier. I need to say just a little bit more about this. Often we think of maturing as reacting to things that happen in our lives. We learn from reacting because most of the time how we react is not very good and the lessons learned can be very hard. Christians mature when they are proactive, reading the scripture, praying, being an active member of the congregation, being a sensitive person to the needs of the church and family and friends. Fewer mistakes will occur when you are considerate, contemplative, and surrender completely to our Lord Jesus Christ. Like my golfing friend who died of cancer, because of my Christian upbringing, I was sensitive to his needs and was his friend in the bad times. And it felt good for both of us. Like Ashley and her team, taking care of children is hard work but oh, so gratifying to see the smiles and happiness they bring. All the, all the others that work in the church give it, and give in our church, it feels good because it is good. Are you called to be a good steward in our church and in the world? I hope so. For if so, you have everything to gain from the experience. Please spend time thinking and talking with staff and friends about how you can be a good steward of your time, your talents, and your money within the context of your Christian journey. Hello, church family. We begin each day with a grateful heart, just like the lectern says. I'm Sue Kane, and today I'm reporting as your church finance chair. Five weeks ago, <clears throat> Tanya came before you to announce a family was offering a challenge gift opportunity. Your gift would be matched dollar for dollar, up to $4,000. This past week, we as a church family met this goal. Many thanks to each of you who gave, 
and many, many thanks to the wonderful family providing this needed gift. One half of this gift will go to our general fund and one half will go to the REACH campaign principal. Your gifts make a real difference in the ministries this church can offer. Thank you. Well, as we hear and as we experience, this is surely a gratitude Sunday as we express our thankfulness and commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ, who has done so much to us. Now, at this time, I'm asking you to please participate with me in the prayer as we pray for the ministry of giving of this church. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful today that you are our Savior and Lord, and you reach out for every heart, no matter where we are at this point in our lives. On this very special Sunday, Lord, we, we want to express our thankfulness that you have provided all our needs accordingly, also financial needs of this church. Lord, we lift up this offering plate toward you, and we surrender with everything to you, Lord. And we pray for every sing single church member and family, everyone at this time, and we are thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have committed to us as we respond to your love and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue our prayer time at this time, I would like to remind uh, a prayer opportunity that is coming on this afternoon. It will be on Zoom. It will be all virtual. It is so-called International Day of Prayer, prayer meeting, as we are praying for uh, persecuted Christian churches and churches all over the world. As you know, it is not natural to some Christians in in different countries that to come together as we come openly, to build a church, to talk about stewardship, to preach the Bible, to welcome people, invite people to their worship gatherings because they can't do it. They are underground, or if they be found, they will get persecuted. And you may say, well, how can that be in this modern world, or postmodern world? It can be. I can name you a long list of countries where there is no, it is not, impo it is not possible to worship as we worship. So uh, this afternoon at 5 p.m., as we had mailed out uh, the address where you can uh, check in to join with us uh, on Zoom as we pray for persecuted countries and persecuted Christians where they gather and experience hard times. I think it is very important for us, as uh, Mr. Conley said, that it is Christian faith means responsibility. That becomes natural uh, the longer we walk with the Lord. This is natural that we pray for those Christians who are less fortunate, even persecuted at this time. Now we take a moment for prayer, and we pray for you, my friend. We pray for all our families in this community. We pray for Berea United Methodist Church family and friends. We pray for you, friends who are having difficult times. Uh, you've been ill or your family member has been sick. Uh, there has been surgery, several of them, uh, during the last couple of weeks. Uh, let's keep on praying for all our friends and family members who have been in the hospital or who are in the hospital at this time. Uh, and please watch your prayer chain emails that we keep on sending out just about every day. Write the names down. When you have your Bible study or prayer time, uh, bring that list before you and exercise your Christian responsibility and joy by saying a prayer one at a time for these dear friends. Your prayer makes so 
Big difference, my friends. Now, one prayer means a lot, but when we pray together, even we don't possibly pray at the same time, but knowing that you are out there and you are praying for those who are sick and praying for our community, it means so much. People call us many times or they text us that we felt your prayers. You hear me? They say, we feel that somebody was praying for us. And then you text them back or send email, yes, we have been praying for you. So please join with me as we pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, on this Gratitude Sunday, Christ the King Sunday, Father, we come to you in this wonderful name of Jesus, this loving name of Jesus that means everything to us. Lord, you are all we need. You are our life. You are the shepherd. You forgive all our sins. You heal us when we struggle, when we ill. You give us strength. And even the practical needs, which sometimes are many, you provide. Lord, we hereby commit our hearts and lives to you, Jesus, on this Gratitude Sunday. As we remember our Berea UMC ministry, we remember our church family members, we remember those who are sick or in the hospital at the present time. Many of them are longtime church family members. We pray for our children and youth. We pray for our family units who come and step forward time after time, saying that, here, Lord, here I am to support you and to support my church. Lord, we are so thankful that we can remember our community during this Thanksgiving season, our state and our nation. Lord, help us to get through with this pandemic. We pray for each and every one who's been affected and infected by this pandemic. Lord, give us strength and give us your joy and peace as we worship you this morning and as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The song that I'd like to sing for you today is entitled Rushing Wind, and it was written by a man named Dennis Jernigan. And um, we'll be hearing from Pastor Timo and his message to us about the power of the Holy Spirit. And this song speaks of the Holy Spirit as he is the rushing wind. Rushing wind blow through me with your tender breeze. Search out the depths of my heart like a fire burn through me here on my knees. Consume every dark hidden
morning. Please join with me for the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. The scripture lesson today comes from Psalm 100 and John 3, 8. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness, his faithfulness continues through all generations. The New Testament reading is John 3, 8. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful Sunday. And what a hopeful message we have heard through testimonies and songs that we truly have a king and we truly are people of hope. And we are truly uh, followers and doers and followers to somebody who is much greater than we can ever imagine. The longer we spend time with him, the clearer it gets to us that he's worthy. He's worthy to follow, and he's worthy to, uh, to serve. Now, this is Christ the King Sunday, and sometimes you wonder what it is. Christ, Christ is King all the time and every Sunday, or there may be somebody who is wondering what all it means that Christ is the king, not just a king, but the king. Now, and what has Holy Spirit to do with that? Now, there is Father, and then there is Son, and then there is Holy Spirit. Now, remember what Jesus says before he ascended back to heaven. He said, it is good for you that I go. Otherwise, I couldn't send him back to you who will represent me. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit who has been appointed to be our counselor, representing Jesus, being his spirit, and make sure that his kinghood, talking about Jesus, will be proclaimed and brought to us at every level of our life. So he was talking about somebody who is going to take over after he is gone. Now they are ruling together, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. They are one God in three persons. But for us to know how his kinghood, let's spend it today as we celebrate Christ the King Sunday, how his kinghood, comes to us, how it will be proclaimed and ministered right into our hearts. So what is this power of Christ's Spirit? What is the power of the Holy Spirit, divine Spirit, who represents Jesus and who makes sure that his kinghood will be proclaimed and ministered right into our hearts and needs, even today as I preach? And friends, yes, I believe it is much easier to say that I believe in this king, I believe in this savior, I believe in this savior, I believe in his Holy Spirit, than to say I follow him 
in everything. As it is many times much easier to be a wonderful Christian in the church, but then it can get very complicated when we go up back to our mission field. The Holy Spirit is Christ's presence in the life of the church. Now, if there is Christ's presence in the church, it is because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is, it is so critically important, especially when we celebrate Christ the King Sunday, to, to know through which channel his presence come to us today when he was ascended and he seated on the right hand of the Father. How can we say that the Christ's presence is true and real to us in the church? So is his presence real to you and to me, my friends, only if we are spiritually tuned and we live alongside with the Holy Spirit. If there are spiritual, we are spiritually alive. If there is life in my life, if there is life in your life, it is only because of the Holy Spirit and his presence. When we sense Christ's leading, Christ's challenge, or his support and comfort, as we need many times, we say that it is the Holy Spirit at work. The Spirit of Christ that was sent to us after Jesus ascended back to, to his heavenly Father. In Hebrew language, which is the language of the Old Testament, the words for spirit, wind, and breath are nearly the same. They are very much the same. The same is true in Greek, which is the language of the New Testament. New Testament letters were written in Greek. In trying to describe God's activity among them, the ancient God-fearing people were saying that it was like a God's breath. Missing the better definition, they said it was like a God's breath among us. Can't explain it, but we felt that God was with us, like sacred wind. It could not be seen or held, but we just knew that God was with us through his spirit. Like Jesus says in our scripture reading today, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. It is as if there was something sacred and secret going on in our lives, and we just can't explain it. We feel that God is with me. We feel it inside of our heart. But can you put words to it? Probably not. When I got saved as a young man back in Helsinki, I have a long journey. I was raised in the Christian home, but I can say that nothing was personal to me. When I was attending services, I knew when to sit and when to stand. I knew how to respond to the priest. I had been baptized and confirmed, but I didn't have Jesus in my heart, so to speak. But after accepting him as my personal savior, listen to me, I just knew that it has happened to me now because Holy Spirit Christ's spirit was right in my heart. Did I, was I able to completely explain it to my co-worker, a young man that I work with? No, I couldn't. I just broke in tears and I said, I can't reason it well. I just know that even the whole Helsinki was put upside down. I know I belong to Christ. I belong to Christ. So where we find the evidence of his spirit at work? Talking about Christ's spirit, the spirit of this king. What is the power of the Holy Spirit? It is in the Bible. In the book you read that the gift that God has given to us, 
In Genesis, a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, it says. In Genesis 1-2. As he was taking part in creation, the Spirit. Later in the Old Testament, we often read of him, the Spirit of the Lord. As he was leading, helping, and guiding, protecting, and healing God's people. In Matthew's account of Jesus' baptism, Jesus saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning on him. And he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. After his resurrection, Christ told his disciples, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Of course, that would take place after Jesus is Jesus ascending back to heaven, as we read from the book of Acts 1.8. A few weeks later, on the day of Pentecost, this came to pass. The Bible says, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind. All of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The power and the presence of this king, talking about Jesus, was proclaimed into the lives and hearts of these disciples. As the book of Acts and Paul's letters attest, from time on, from that time on, the early Christians were vividly aware that it was the Holy Spirit who was leading Christ's church. He was representing the king with authority and power. Now, what is the power of the Holy Spirit? What is the power of Christ's Spirit? What is the spirit of this kinghood that has been preached and proclaimed right into our hearts? It is guidance, it is comfort, and it is strength. There are some church family members today from our church who needs this kind of comfort. They have lost their family member. And they need comfort that only this Spirit of Christ can keep to them. We can share words. We can share love. We can express our condolences and sympathy. But it's only Christ's Spirit that can reach to our hearts and right there where the pain is. Now today we continue to experience God's presence and breath. God's Holy Spirit. As one of our greets in the United Methodist Church put it, we believe in the Holy Spirit, God's presence with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in all this. We believe that this King, Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross, who loved us so much, that even you had been the only person he came for on the earth and into the world, he would still take the cross for you and for you only because he loved you. And, by the way, because he loves you today unconditionally. We sense the Spirit in time alone, in prayer, in your study of the Scriptures, in reflecting in reflection on a difficult decision, maybe some of you are there now, or in the memory of a loved one. We know that Jesus is right here with me as the Holy Spirit comes to our heart and life. The Spirit's touch is intensely personal. Your experiences can be so very different than mine. Although there's one common thing, we just know that we are right in his presence. Jesus the King is right with me right now. Perhaps we're, we are even more aware about the Holy Spirit in the community of believers here in the church, here at Berea United Methodist Church. When we talk about our ministry, we talk about our, talk about our personal journey, 
how we came to believe in Jesus Christ? Who were the people who brought me in? Who prayed for me? Who, was, who, who were the people I was hanging out with? Who were my youth team leaders and members? Who was my children ministry at that time? Who were my pastor or other leaders who were encouraging me in my Christian journey? It was the Holy Spirit who brought Christ Church into being. It's still guiding and upholding it. If we still will put, would we still but listen to him. So, and the last thing, what is the power of the Holy Spirit? What is the power of Christ to me today? How I feel his presence? It is in the gifts we receive. In the gifts we receive. How does the Holy Spirit affect our lives? By changing us, by transforming us. By giving us faith. I think it was last Sunday I mentioned, it was kind of my personal testimony. When it comes to my faith that I have today, more and more I have come to learn that I believe and I consider it is more and more a gift that has been given to me. Instead of something I am making up or building or squeezing from myself. Because I can't do it. It is, it is the gift, it is a gift from God. By renewing us and by strengthening us of the work of Christ's ministry. Today in the life of our church. Let me say just a few things about the fruits. Jesus says, you will know them by the fruits referring to us. People will know us by the fruits they see in us, in Matthew 7, 16. So what sort of fruit? Paul asserts that the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and guidance and generosity and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. These are the fruits of Christ through his Spirit to us. And then gifts. What are the gifts? Apostle Paul also writes that the Spirit bestows spiritual gifts on believers. In his letter to Corinthians, in the first letter to Corinthians, he says, he lists nine. He says, which vary from one person to another. The utterance of wisdom, the utterance of knowledge, Faith, healing, working of miracles, prophecy, the discernment of spirits, various kinds of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. These fruits and these gifts are not of our own achievement, but these are gifts from the king to us, to build his church, to build his kingdom. Sometimes you hear people saying that, Pastor, I feel I don't have faith. Or, Pastor, I don't feel I don't have much talents or gifts. I don't have much fruit. Then, of course, we need to ask, well, when was it last time you used your faith? Where it was needed? Or when was it last time you used the fruit that God gave to you? Where was it last time you used your gifts? The more we use them, the more they grow. There's a danger that you will lose them if you don't use them. So what the little you have, whether it's faith or fruit or gifts, start using it. Start serving right there where you are. And they will grow and grow and get stronger. And your influence among God's children will be greater and stronger than ever before. Something to take home today as we are closing and we are, uh, we are leaving this place of worship. Where can we see Christ the King today? Where can we see on this Thanksgiving Sunday, on this Gratitude Sunday, 
It is through the presence of his Holy Spirit. So we pray from one heart on this Sunday, special Sunday, come Holy Spirit, come upon me, upon my church, upon my community, so that I can see Jesus better and closer than ever before. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, dear King, we need your power, we need your strength. We need you, Lord. And we are so thankful that you have made yourself available through the presence of your Holy Spirit. Come upon my heart, upon my ministry, upon my family, upon this church we serve, through which we serve you, upon this community called Berea, Kentucky, upon the state of Kentucky, upon this nation we love, United States of America, and every, upon every 50 states, upon this world, upon all the churches that serve you today, and upon those who are longing for to find you, Jesus. Come upon us and help us to be faithful. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to continue in that prayer as we sing together uh, the Spirit song. And uh, as you sing these words, help us, or ask that you would Allow the Holy Spirit to come and minister to you. Come, Holy Spirit, come.
person, I ask you to please open your heart for the blessing and benefit so. My dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the 